Welcome to Data Domain Fundamentals. Click the Notes tab to view text that corresponds to the audio recording. Click the Resources tab to download a PDF version of this e-learning. This course covers an overview of data domain architecture, features and functionality. This module focuses on data domain solution and its benefits. It also covers the common hardware features of data domain system, current hardware models, features of data domain virtual edition and the software licensing features of ELMS. This lesson covers a basic overview of data domain system, its backup environment and its integration with existing environments. Increasing the storage speed and capacity for the data generated along with the cost effectiveness is a perpetual challenge. One of the most expensive and resource intensive task is gathering, storing and protecting data backups. Writing data on the tapes and shipping and storing the tapes off-site is one of the largest financial and labor resource challenge in the conventional tape-centric environment. The diagram here illustrates the conventional process of handling backups through backup servers. In step 1, the diagram describes how clients and servers are storing data on the primary storage device. Step 2 illustrates the conventional process of handling backups through backup servers. The backup servers preserve the data on the primary storage device by copying it to a tape library. In step 3, tapes are physically transported and sorted off-site for archival and disaster recovery purposes. This prevents the loss of backup data in case of a negative event in the data center. Step 4 describes off-site data recovery process. In this case, data recovery requires a manual process of transporting the tapes back to the primary storage device in the data center. Introducing a data domain system to an existing backup environment adds a scalable backup and archive solution to any enterprise environment. Data domain systems are a protection storage platform for backup and archive data that reduce the amount of disk storage needed to retain and protect data by ratios of 10 to 30x and greater, making disk a cost-effective alternative to tape. These systems can scale up to 150 PB of logical capacity managed by a single system with DD Cloud tier. With throughput up to 68 TB per hour, data domain systems make it possible to complete more backups in less time and provide faster, more reliable restores. Data domain replicator software transfers only the deduplicated and compressed unique changes across any IP network, requiring a fraction of the bandwidth, time and cost compared to traditional replication methods. Time to DR readiness is greatly reduced when compared to other replication methods. Data Domain's Data Invulnerability Architecture, built into every data domain system, provides industry's best defense against data integrity issues, ensuring you can access and recover your data when you need it. Finally, data domain systems are able to consolidate backup, archive and disaster recovery onto a single platform, making them an ideal protection storage solution. In summary, data domain systems simplify the storage and handling of data by reducing or in many cases entirely eliminating the need for tape for data storage. With data domain systems, data is backed up to disk instead of tape. Data domain deduplication greatly reduces the data footprint before the data is backed up. Data domain global compression technology combines and exceptionally efficient high-performance inline deduplication technology with a local compression technique. The reduced data footprint 
allows data to be retained on site for longer periods and allows transfer across the network for archival. Data recovery is similarly transformed by the elimination of time consuming and resource intensive handling of tape. Tape backups can optionally be incorporated into a data domain environment if required by regulatory or corporate requirements. A data domain appliance is a storage system with shelves of disks and a controller. This appliance is optimized to perform the backup first and then archive the applications. It also supports the industry leading enterprise applications. The list on the left comprise primarily of backup, archive and enterprise applications that are not only Dell EMC's offerings with Dell EMC Networker and Avamar but also with Quest, Veritas, Oracle, HP, IBM, SAP HANA and others. The data is transferred from the application to the primary storage through Ethernet or fiber channel. Ethernet uses mass storage protocol, NFS or CIFS. It can also use optimized protocols such as NDMP and Data Domain Boost. Fiber channel connectivity enables a data domain system to act as a virtual tape library which eliminates virtual tape management. Fiber channel connectivity also enables DD boost over fiber channel. After the data is received by data domain system, it is deduplicated during storage process and later it is replicated for disaster recovery. Only the deduplicated and compressed unique data segments that have been filtered out through the process on the target tier are replicated. This lesson covers the common hardware features of data domain system. Data domain systems are based on basic hardware architecture. Hardware features common to all models include rack mountable in four post racks, hot swappable disks with redundant hot swappable fans and redundant hot swappable power modules, dual inline memory module, modules for random access memory, a battery backed NVRAM card or persistent RAM, video, keyboard and mouse ports that are connected to a monitor, keyboard and mouse, front panel light emitting diodes that provide system status indicators. Most data domain systems support the addition of one or more storage expansion shelves to increase capacity. Documents for each hardware model are published on the Dell EMC support site. Connectivity features include keyboard, monitor and mouse connections, serial and Ethernet connectivity and many systems also support fiber channel connectivity. Many data domain models provide keyboard and PS2 mouse port for connecting directly to the unit with a keyboard and monitor. Check with the on-site administrator for the preferred access method. For repairs in the field, access to the command line interface to shut down, restart and run diagnostics is usually through the serial port. All data domain systems may be connected to Ethernet networks for TCP IP based data transfer and system management. All models have a minimum of two built in ports. Some models may be configured with additional ports by adding optional Ethernet expansion cards. Newer systems also include a dedicated Ethernet port for what is known as lights out management or remote system management. Interface cards are usually added to provide additional network capacity. Connecting to a fiber channel based storage area network is supported by adding a host bus adapter card. In these environments, the virtual tape library VTL software license and or DD Boost software license is also required.
components under high mechanical or electrical stress such as spinning drives fans and power supplies are provided with n plus 1 redundant configuration n plus 1 redundancy is a system configuration in which certain components have at least one independent backup component so that the system functionality continues if a part fails this allows for uninterrupted operation at full capacity and operational status if one component fails for data rate 6 technology provides additional protection of data integrity when up to two disks fail this lesson covers the current data domain hardware models expansion shelves and sdd shelves here is a look at the new data domain systems and the performance and scalability they achieve dd6800 dd9300 and dd9800 each support data domain cloud tier dd cloud tier allows up to 2x the capacity of the active tier to be natively tiered to the cloud for long term retention the models that are currently shipped with dd os 6.1r dd2200 dd6300 dd6800 dd9300 dd9800 and dd virtual edition from dd os 6.0 data domain introduces three new mid range models replacing four previous data domain models the dd6300 all in one model replaces the previous dd2500 and dd4200 models the new dd6800 and dd9300 models are dataless head models dd6800 replaces the previous dd4500 model and the dd9300 replaces the dd7200 model note the term all in one or aio refers to the systems where both the os and the user data are stored in the head disk or controller note the term all in one or aio refers to systems where both the os and user data are stored in the head disk or controller the term data less head or dlh refers to systems where no user data is stored in the controller and the system can therefore take a controller upgrade or head swap later from dd os 6.0 data domain introduces a new system into the high end space dd 9800 The DD9800 is similar in physical hardware to the DD9500. However, the DD9800 has a larger active tier capacity in both base and expanded configurations. A standard SDD shelf and more memory in the expanded configuration. This is a list of both DD9500 and DD9800 features. Here is a continuation of the list of DD9500 and DD9800 features. This table is extracted from the data domain hardware overview and installation guide. for the dd9500 and dd9800 models please refer to this guide for more information this table highlights the capacities and compatibilities of the options for the es30 expansion shelves es30 sata can accommodate 15 1 two or three tb drives and supports the dd6300 dd6800 
DD9300 and DD9800. ES30 SAS can accommodate 15 2 or 3 TB drives and supports the DD6300, DD6800, DD9300 and DD9800. Both the ES30 SATA and ES30 SAS have one spare drive. ES30 SATA and ES30 SAS shelves can be attached to the same head unit but cannot be combined in the same set. The ES3060 can accommodate 15 4 TB drives and supports the DD6800, DD9300 and DD9800. DS60 shelf supports 3 TB and 4 TB SAS drives in 15 drive increments up to 60 drives per shelf. DS60 is available for the DD6300, DD6800, DD9300 and DD9800 systems. Solid state drive shelves were introduced to manage metadata. With greater storage capacity and higher speed access, data domain systems need to accelerate processing metadata and data access throughout the file system. The current trend is to add tensor drives which leads to spindle consolidation, thus reducing the overall performance of data movement through the system. The solution is to provide a faster cache tier for storing data domain file system metadata clients that is fast to access and process by using a low latency flash cache solution. The solid state drive cache tier provides the SSD cache storage for the file system. The file system draws the required storage from the SSD cache tier without active intervention from the user. These improvements provide higher random IOPS with low latency and overall system performance improvement despite the density of the SSD being used. The FS15 SDD shelf is a solid state expansion shelf used exclusively for the metadata cache in the active or extended retention tiers of a data domain system. It uses the same form factor as the earlier ES30 expansion shelves and offers different quantities of 800 GB SAS solid state drives depending on the capacity of the active tier. There is a physical shelf count limit per SAS string. You cannot attach an FS15 shelf to a SAS string already containing a maximum number of shelves, 7 ES30s for instance. You need to attach it to a string with fewer than 7 shelves. With a DD9800, the FS15 can be configured as required with either 8 or 15 disks and with DD6800 and DD9300 models in a high availability configuration with variable numbers of SSDs 2 or 5 disks for DD6800 and 5 or 8 disks for DD9300. This lesson covers the Data Domain Virtual Edition. Data Domain Virtual Edition is a customer deployable virtual deduplication appliance that provides data protection for entry, enterprise and service provider environments. DDVE is agile. It is designed for use with VMware. It is exceptionally quick to set up and run. You can start with a small capacity configuration and scale as large as 16 TB. It is flexible as it offers a flexible deployment environment that includes deduplication, replication, DD boost and scalable storage capacity. 
users can take advantage of the same powerful deduplication feature available in all data domain hardware products along with the security of full replication capabilities and optional use of DD Boost to further speed up data transfers to your own scalable storage configurations, making DDVE efficient. Shown here is a breakdown of features supported with the Data Domain Virtual Edition in the VMware environment. Dell EMC offers a DDVE evaluation license for a limited 500 GB capacity and full function of DD replication, DD encryption and DD boost with no set expiration. This license can be replaced with larger capacity licenses if needed, up to a maximum of 16 TB. Other limited time evaluation licenses are also available. DDVE can be managed by both DD System Manager and DD Management Center. It supports all replication topologies between virtual and physical systems. It also supports all common backup software currently supported by Data Domain. Three types of DDoS system features are available in DDVE. Features that function exactly as those in a physical data domain system are DD Boost, CIFS, Workgroup and Active Directory, NFS, DD Encryption, Garbage Collection and DD Replication. Features that are optimized for use with DDVE are Stream Counts, M3 Counts, the DD System Manager, IPv4 and IPv6, and hedge unit swaps. New features supporting the DDVE system are the deployment assessment tool, licensing through the electronic licensing and management system, virtual resource monitoring, and RAID on LUN. This lesson covers the ELMS licensing and the process involved. Electronic Licensing Management System electronically represents software licenses. It is the standard method of electronic license fulfillment and activation used by Dell EMC. DDoS uses one license per DDVE instance. DDVE does not support previous licenses from legacy DDoS systems. When deploying the DDVE system, the license must be added to access the file system. E-licensing electronically represents software license entitlements. It provides standardized ordering, fulfillment and activation. DDoS 6.1 supports ELMS. Data domain systems running DDoS 6.1 can use either ELMS or data domain licensing. ELMS on data domain systems use one license file per system. The license file contains a single license for all purchased features. There are two categories of licenses, served and unserved licenses. Served licenses are on a license server and the DD system has to check in with the server to see what is licensed. Served licenses are supported only with DDVE. Unserved licenses are the licenses that are applied directly to the DD system. The workflow. Customers will first place the license order through the sales portal. My Quotes is the EMC sales page to order e-licenses. The order is processed and ELMS generates a license authorization code in order to activate the purchased licenses. For unserved license, the customer accesses ELMS and enters the license activation code. ELMS displays the licenses included with the provided activation code. The customer chooses the features to activate and once entered, ELMS generates the license file. 
the customer downloads the license file and applies it on the selected DDVE system. For served licenses, the customer applies the license file to the common license server where it can serve licenses to any DDVE systems configured to use the license server. This module covered an overview of Data Domain System. It covered the solution provided by Data Domain Systems for backup and recovery purposes, the various hardware models and features, Data Domain Virtual Edition and the latest licensing process provided by DDoS 6.1 ELMS. This module focuses on data domain architecture and technologies. It provides an overview of the various file structures and the type of data it stores. It describes the deduplication process and how CISL is implemented to optimize the deduplication. DIA is also described with its technologies to provide data protection. This lesson covers the data parts used by data domain systems. In a backup environment with Ethernet connectivity, backup and archive media servers send data from clients to data domain systems on the network. A direct connection between a dedicated port on the backup management server and a dedicated port on the data domain system is used. Physical separation of the backup traffic from replication traffic can be achieved by using two separate Ethernet interfaces on the data domain system. This allows backups and replication to run simultaneously without network conflicts. The protocols supported by data domain systems over Ethernet connections include NFS, CIFS, NDMP, DD Boost, Telnet or SSH, FTP or SFTP, HTTP or HTTPS. In a backup environment, fiber channel connectivity is supported only if an FCHPA is installed on the backup device. In such environments, the backup and archive media servers send data from clients to data domain systems over a fiber channel system attached network and make use of DD Boost protocols and VTL technology for backup operations. If the data domain virtual tape library option is licensed, the backup or archive server sees the data domain system as one or multiple VTLs. If the data domain boost option is licensed, then any supported backup application will be able to perform backup and restore operations using the DD Boost protocol over fiber channel connection. For more information on backup applications that support the DD Boost over fiber channel, please refer to the Data Domain Boost Compatibility Guide and Data Domain Boost Administrator Guide available on Dell EMC Support Portal. This lesson covers data domain file structures such as slash ddvar and mtrees and its features. The slash ddvar is a third extended file system which stores data domain system administrative files, system code and log files, generated support upload bundles, compressed core files, and .rpm upgrade package files. The slash ddvar folder keeps the administrative files separated from storage files that are on the M tree. You can neither rename nor delete a slash ddvar directory nor you can access all of its subdirectories. But the files stored in slash ddvar can be deleted and retrieved as well.
The managed tree file structure is the destination to store user data. It provides a root directory for user data. You can configure your backup application to a specific M tree and organize backup files. M tree provides more granular space management and reporting. This simplifies management of several features including replication, snapshots, quotas and retention log. These operations can be performed on a specific M tree rather than on the entire file system. For example, here you can configure a directory export level only to the slash HR directory rather than configuring to the entire file system and simplify the data management. This lesson covers types of deduplication such as file-based deduplication and segment-based deduplication. The data domain deduplication process is also explained. In a computing environment, deduplication is a data compression technique that identifies and eliminates the redundant copy of large sequences of data by replacing it with the references to the existing data. Deduplication methods are of two types, file-based deduplication, segment-based deduplication. In file-based deduplication, only the original instance of a file is stored. Future identical copies of the file use a small reference to the original file content. File-based deduplication is also called single instance storage. Fixed length segment deduplication is a technology that reduces data storage requirements by comparing incoming data segments with previously stored data segments. It divides data into a single fixed length and uses hash algorithm to find duplicate data. Variable length segment deduplication evaluates data by examining its contents to look for the boundary from one segment to the next. Variable length segments are any number of bytes within a range determined by the particular algorithm implemented. Data domain implements inline deduplication where variable length segments are examined as soon as they arrive in the system to determine if they are new segments or a duplicate of a segment previously stored. Data deduplication occurs in RAM before the data is written to disk. Around 99% of data segments are analyzed in RAM without disk access and this reduces disk seek time. Writes from RAM to disk are done in full stripe batches to increase the efficiency of disk usage. This slide shows data domain deduplication process. Inbound segments are analyzed in RAM. The stream is divided into variable length segments and each is given a unique ID or fingerprint. If a segment is redundant, a reference to the stored segment is created. If a segment is unique, it is compressed and stored. This lesson covers the definition and benefits of CISL. It also describes how data domain uses CISL to implement inline deduplication. CISL is short for Stream Informed Segment Layout. Data domain uses CISL to implement inline deduplication. CISL uses fingerprint and RAM to identify segments already on disk. CISL scaling architecture provides faster and efficient deduplication by minimizing excessive disk accesses to check if a segment is on disk. 99% of duplicate data segments are identified in line in RAM before the data is stored to disk. Scales with data domain systems using newer and faster CPUs and RAM. 
increases the throughput rate of newly added data. Deduplication using CISL includes the following steps. Segment. The data to be sent is split into variable length segments. Fingerprint. Each segment is given a fingerprint or hash for identification. Filter. 99% of the duplicate segments are identified by summary vector and segment locality techniques in RAM before storing to disk. If a segment is a duplicate, it is referenced and discarded. If a segment is new, the data is grouped and compressed. Compress. New segments are grouped and compressed using common algorithms LZ, GZ, GZ fast or off or no compression. Write. Writes data to containers stored on disk. This lesson covers Data Domain Data Invulnerability Architecture or DIA. Data Invulnerability Architecture is an important data domain technology that provides safe and reliable storage. It protects data against data loss from hardware and software failures. Data Domain Operating System is built to ensure that you can reliably recover your data with confidence. Its elements comprise an architectural design which provides data invulnerability. Four technologies used in DIA which help in protecting the data against data loss are inline data verification, fault avoidance and containment, continuous fault detection and healing, file system recoverability. DIA helps to provide data integrity, recoverability, extremely resilient and protective disk storage. This keeps data safe. As stated previously, DIA uses four technologies to prevent data loss. The inline data verification checks and verifies all file system data and metadata. The end-to-end -end verification flow includes writes request from backup software, analyzes data for redundancy, stores new data segments, stores fingerprints, verifies if TDOS can read data from disk, verifies if the checksum that is read back matches the checksum written to disk. In addition to end-to-end -end verification, data domain systems are equipped with a specialized log structured file system and fault tolerance and containment mechanism. Newer data is never overwritten on the existing data. Traditional file systems often overwrite blocks when data is changed and then uses the old block address. The data domain file system writes only to new blocks. This eliminates the chances of incorrect overwrite that may be caused by a software bug to the latest backup data. This also ensures that the older version remains safe. RAID 6 redundancy enables continuous fault detection and healing to provide an extra level of protection within the data domain operating system. The DDoS detects faults and recovers them continuously. Continuous fault detection and healing ensures successful data restore operations. DDoS periodically rechecks for the integrity of the RAID stripes. The DIA file system recovery reconstructs lost or corrupted file system metadata. 
it includes several file system check tools. If a data domain system does have a problem, DIA, file system recovery ensures that the system is brought back online quickly. This module covered an overview of data domain architecture, its data paths and file structures. It also describes deduplication and how CISL is used to implement inline deduplication. The data protection solution DIA is also explained. This module focuses on the features and benefits of data domain operating system. This lesson covers the features, benefits and ecosystem of DD Boost protocol and VTL. DD Boost is a private protocol that is more efficient than CIFS or NFS. DD Boost has a private and efficient data transfer protocol with options to increase efficiencies. Data Domain Boost is a software option supported across the entire data domain family that distributes parts of the deduplication process out of the data domain system and onto the backup or application server enabling client-site deduplication. This can speed backups by up to 50% and enables more efficient resource utilization including reducing the impact on the server by 20 to 40%. It also reduces the impact on the network by 80 to 99%. In addition, DD Boost for Backup application enables the application to control data domain replication process with full catalog awareness of both the local and remote copies of the backup. DD Boost for Enterprise applications provide application owners control and visibility of their own backups to data domain systems using their native utilities. Dell EMC's Avamar and Networker support DD Boost over LAN, SAN and WAN. Other leading backup and enterprise applications support DD Boost over LAN and or SAN. The applications are Dell EMC Database Application Agent for DD Boost for Enterprise Applications and Protect Point, Quest NetVault Backup, Quest VRanger Pro, Dell EMC Avamar, Dell EMC Microsoft Application Agent for DD Boost for Enterprise Applications, Dell EMC Networker, Hevlet Packard Data Protector, Pivotal Green Plum Data Computing Appliance, VM Backup and Replication, VMware vSphere Data Protection Advanced Data Domain Virtual Tape Library software eliminates the challenges of physical tape and can evaluate up to 60 or more virtual tape libraries with up to 1080 virtual tape drives and unlimited tape cartridges. Dell EMC has qualified Data Domain Virtual Tape Library with leading open systems and IBM I Enterprise backup applications. It integrates non-disruptively into existing fiber channel storage area network backup environments. Any data domain system running VTL can also run other backup operations simultaneously using NAS, NDMP and DD Boost. Using Data Domain Replicator software, organizations can vault virtual tape cartridges over a wide area network to another site for disaster recovery, remote office backup and recovery, or multi-site tape consolidation. Disk-based network storage provides a shorter RTO by eliminating the need for handling, loading, and accessing tapes from a remote location. VTL Tape Out to Cloud feature is now available from DDoS 6.1 and DDVE 3.1. It offers the ability to store off-site and retrieve tapes
for long term retention use cases. This lesson covers the features, benefits and types of data replication. The various data replication topologies are also described. This lesson also introduces receipt replication. Data domain replicator provides automated, policy-based, network efficient and encrypted replication for disaster recovery and multi-site backup and archive consolidation. DD Replicator asynchronously replicates only compressed, deduplicated data over a wide area network, which eliminates up to 99% of the bandwidth required compared to standard replication methods. When replication over untrusted networks, Data Domain Replicator can encrypt sensitive data. This encryption can be enabled on all or only a selected portion of the replicated data set. For fast time to DR readiness, Data Domain Replicator provides logical throughput performance of up to 52 TB per hour over a 10 GB network in replication deployments where one data domain system is mirroring its data to another. You can also consolidate data from up to 270 remote sites by simultaneously replicating data to a single large data domain system at a central hub. Data Domain Replicator offers flexibility by providing multiple replication topologies such as full system mirroring, bidirectional, many-to-many, one-to-many and cascaded. In addition, you can replicate either all or a subset of data on the data domain system. For the highest level of security, DD Replicator can encrypt data being replicated between DD systems using the standard secure socket layer protocol. To manage network utilization, you can set up a schedule to throttle data domain replicator WAN utilization at different times of the day. Replication is set up with a source data domain system and with one or more destination data domain systems. There are five replication types collection, directory, entry, pool, and managed. Collection deduplicates the entire data store on the source and transfers that to the destination, and the replicated volume is read only. Directory provides replication at the level of individual directories. M tree replicates entire M trees, that is, a virtual file structure that enables advanced management. Pool, pool replication is similar to directory replication, but the source is VTL data. Managed, used with data domain boost and is managed and controlled by the backup software. Data domain has various supported replication topologies where data flows from source to destination directory over a LAN or WAN. The topologies include one-to-one -one replication, which is the simplest type of replication. This is from the data domain source system to a data domain destination system. In a bidirectional replication pair, data from the source is replicated to the destination directory on the destination system and from the source directory on the destination system to the destination directory on the source system. In many to one replication, data flows from several source directories to a single destination system. For example, this type of replication occurs when several branch offices replicate their data to the corporate headquarters IT system. In one to many replication, Multi-stream optimization maximizes replication throughout per context. In a cascaded replication topology, directory replication is chained among three or more data domain systems. Data recovery can be performed from the non-degraded replication pair context. One additional topology is available, cascaded one to many. Virtual synthetic full backup is the combination of the last full backup and all subsequent incremental backups. 
In a typical virtual synthetic workload, backup applications leverage virtual synthesis on the data domain system to create a full backup by using incremental backups and the last full backup. Receipt based virtual synthetic replication is not a new form of replication, but instead provides optimization on the existing replication types such as managed file replication and M3 replication. Instead of sending a new full backup file, instructions are sent to synthesize the regions from the file already present in DDFS to generate a new full backup file. These instructions are called include RPC. When include RPCs are received, it will copy the reference of those regions already present in DDFS to generate a new backup file. In this example, Gen0 is the backup file already present in DDFS. Gen1 is the target file where the new file is generated. From the Gen0 file, instructions are sent which include the three regions. These included files are used to synthesize the Gen1 file. The Gen0 file is called the base file where the Gen1 file is called the target file. In this example, there is only one Gen0 file. However, in a normal user environment, there can be multiple base files. Backup applications that benefit from this feature include Avamar, Networker and NetBackup. However, there were some VSR limitations. Only 8 base files can be remembered at one given time. If there are more than 8 base files at ingest, replication can only use 8 base files on the destination site. Any base file over that are ignored. In addition, the offset and the length of the VS operation must be 4 MB aligned to be remembered. The portions that are not 4 MB aligned will be ignored. Receipt replication is an enhancement to the method of virtual synthetic replication. The goal of this feature is to improve the replication performance of the virtual synthetic workload. VSR worked on both the virtual synthetic and fast copy plus overwrite workload. However, receipt replication will only work on the VS workload and does not apply to the fast copy plus overwrite workload. Receipt replication will be applied automatically when there is qualified VS workloads. It functions transparently to the application and to customers. Similar to synthetic replication, Receipt replication will also work with M3 replication and managed file replication. Receipt replication overcomes the challenges faced with the VS workload by using an attribute B3 that can store large size attributes persistently. This lesson covers the features of storage migration and migration on expansion shelves. Storage migration in a data domain system is a licensed feature. Storage migration supports the replacement of an existing storage enclosure with new enclosures. The system processes such as data access, expansion, cleaning and replication are unaffected during the migration process. The storage migration utilizes a lot of system resources, but you can control this with throttle settings that gives the migration a relatively higher or lower priority. You can also suspend a migration to make the resources available for other processes and later resume the migration when resource demand is lower. The replacement of existing storage enclosures offer higher performance, higher capacity and a smaller data footprint. The migration process on a data domain system occurs at the shelf level and not at the logical data level. As a result of this, 
all disks present on the source shelf are accessed and copied over regardless of whether it contains any data. Therefore, this process cannot be used to shrink a logical data. This lesson covers data domain extended retention and retention lock policies. Data domain extended retention provides long-term retention of backup data and eliminates tape infrastructure for backup retention. This software is supported on the DD860, DD990, DD4200, DD4500, DD6800, DD7200, DD9300, DD9500 and DD9800 systems. Data Domain Extended Retention provides an internal tiering approach that enables cost-effective, long-term retention of backup data on data domain system. With this, customers can leverage data domain systems for long-term backup retention and minimize reliance on tape. Data Domain Extended Retention transparently incorporates two tiers of storage on a data domain system to achieve cost-effective scalability while delivering the throughput required to ingest hundreds of terabytes of backup data. This combination makes data domain systems the ideal tape elimination solution for long-term backup retention. Data domain extended retention provides transparent separation of short-term and long-term backup data by storing it in different tiers on backup domain system. Data is initially stored in the active tier for backup and operational recovery, then moved to an extremely scalable retention tier that is optimized for long-term data retention, usually measured in years. It ensures long-term data access and recoverability with fault isolation so that in the event of a failure or catastrophe, the system continues to operate with all unaffected components. Data Domain Extended Return enables granular unit-to-unit -unit replication for disaster recovery. In the event of a connectivity issue affecting the replication process, the data domain system only needs to replicate the impacted unit to resynchronize. Data Domain Retention Lock enables IT organizations to efficiently store and manage different types of governance and compliance archive data on a single data domain system. DD Retention Lock helps to ensure that data integrity is maintained. Any data that is locked cannot be overwritten, modified or deleted for a user-defined retention period of up to 70 years. Data Domain Retention Lock also enables secure file locking of archive data at an individual file level, enabling these files to be intermixed with unlocked files on the same data domain system. Data domain retention lock leverages industry standard protocols such as network file system and common internet file system for time-based retention of files. As a result, it can be integrated seamlessly with industry-leading archive applications providing customers with an end-to-end -end archiving solution. There are two types of DD Retention Lock Editions. DD Retention Lock Governance Edition, DD Retention Lock Compliance Edition. DD Retention Lock Governance Edition allows customers to maintain the integrity of the archive data with the assumption that the system administrator is generally trusted with all legal actions performed on the data domain system. By enabling DD Retention Lock Governance Edition on an M3, IT administrators can apply retention policies to an individual file level of the data set on the governance enabled M3 for a specific period of time, delete an archive file via an archiving application after the retention period expires, update the default values of minimum and maximum retention periods per M3, the default values of minimum and maximum retention periods are 12 hours 
and 5 years respectively. Extend the retention time of locked archive files. Locked files cannot be modified on the data domain system even after the retention period for the file expires. Archive data that is retained on the data domain system is not deleted automatically when the retention period expires. An archiving application must delete the file. With DD Retention Lock Governance Edition, IT administrators can meet secure data retention requirements while keeping the ability to update the retention period should the corporate governance policies change. For example, an IT administrator might want to revert the locked state of a file on a specified path name inside of an M tree, delete an M tree enabled with DD Retention Lock Governance. The DD Retention Lock Compliance Edition meets the strict requirements of regulatory standards for electronic records such as Section 17A, 4F and other standards that are practiced worldwide. DD Retention Lock Compliance, when enabled on an M tree, ensures that all the files are locked by an archiving application for a time-based retention period, cannot be deleted or overwritten under any circumstances until the retention period expires. This is archived using multiple hardening procedures, requiring dual sign-on for certain administrative actions. Before engaging DD Retention Lock Compliance Edition, the system administrator must create a security officer role. The system administrator can create the first security officer, but only the security officer can create other security officers on the system. Some of the actions requiring dual sign-on are extending the retention periods for an M tree, renaming the M tree, deleting the retention lock compliance license from the data domain system, securing the system clock from illegal updates. DD Retention Lock Compliance implements an internal security clock to prevent malicious tampering with the system clock. The security clock closely monitors and records the system clock. If there is an accumulated two-week skew within a year between the security clock and the system clock, then the data domain file system is disabled and can be resumed only by a security officer. This lesson covers the features of cloud tier. Cloud tier feature of data domain enables the movement of inactive data from an active tier of a data domain system to a low cost and a high capacity object storage like a public, private or hybrid cloud. This mechanism is highly efficient for long-term data retention. During the process of data movement, only the unique and deduplicated data is sent from the data domain system to the cloud. This ensures that the data being sent to the cloud occupies as little space as possible and also results in a lower TCO over time for a long-term storage. The cloud tier supports the data domain retention lock feature and it meets all the regulatory and compliance policies. From DDoS 6.0, the supported cloud storage includes ECS, VirtuStream, Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure. Encryption in data domain can be enabled at three levels. Data domain system level, active tier level, cloud tier level. Encryption at active tier is applicable only if encryption is enabled at the system level. The system level encryption is a licensed feature. The cloud units have separate controls for enabling encryption. The encryption of data at rest is enabled by default in the cloud. Users have the option to disable encryption if desired. From DDoS 6.0, external key manager is not supported. Once the data is in the cloud tier, the encryption status cannot be changed. So, the decision to encrypt the data or not to encrypt must be made before sending any data to the cloud. 
the complete process of data transfer between a data domain system and the cloud is done over a secure HTTP connection. Cloud tier can be enabled on both source and target data domain systems. If the source system is cloud tier enabled and the data is migrated to the cloud, then data must be read from the cloud for doing a replication. A replicated file is always written on the active tier on the destination system, even if it is cloud tier enabled. Managed file replication and M3 replication can be implemented on cloud tier enabled systems with latest TDOS. Directory replication works only on the backup M3, thus directory replication is not affected by cloud tier. Collection replication is not supported on cloud tier enabled data domain systems. DDoS 6.1 introduces replication to cloud where DDVE instances set up in the cloud replicate from one DDVE system to another. The data backed up with a DDVE in one region can be replicated to DDVE systems configured in the same or other regions. This lesson covers the features of BoostFS. BoostFS is a virtual system running on a Linux client. It is based on the DD Boost SDK and the open source software Fuse. BoostFS exports a storage unit from a DD system to create a mount point on the client system. Also, BoostFS collects the result of the file system operations conducted on the mount points by the kernel on the client system and translates them into DD Boost SDK APIs in order to communicate with DD system. As a result, files and directories that are created on the mount point are actually stored in the storage unit on the DD system. The third-party backup applications can avoid the cost and effort of integration with the DD Boost APIs by directly accessing the mount points. This allows the customers to use the DD Boost feature without actually integrating their applications with DD Boost APIs. The third-party applications supported in this release are Commvault, MySQL and MongoDB. BoostFS Profiler is a software tool designed to help users evaluate or qualify backup applications for BoostFS file system using comparative performance analysis against NFS. It is an interactive terminal that guides users through the evaluation process which includes environment setup for the test, execution of the test, cataloging the test artifact and compilation of test result for analysis. The benefits of integrating backup application with BoostFS are improvement in backup performance up to 50%, reduction in bandwidth consumption up to 99%, load on the server reduced up to 20 to 40%, provides access to DD Boost capabilities such as link aggregation with dynamic interface groups and backup application control of replication Application owners have control of backups that are created using BoostFS. This lesson covers data domain encryption and data sanitization. Data domain encryption software option encrypts all data on the system using an internally generated encryption key. This encryption key is static and cannot be changed by the user. For environments requiring encryption keys to be changed on a periodic basis to meet compliance regulation, you can manage the life cycle of the encryption key for each data domain system individually with encryption key rotation. If an external encryption key manager is needed, then the data domain system can be integrated with RSA Data Protection Manager for an enterprise-wide external encryption management. 
In addition to above features, it also provides inline encryption, which means as the data is being ingested, the data stream is deduplicated, compressed, and encrypted using an encryption key before being written to the RAID group. Data Domain System offers two types of encryption. Encryption of data at rest, encryption of data in flight. Encryption of data at rest protects user data if the data domain system is lost or stolen. It also eliminates accidental exposure if a failed drive needs replacement. When the file system is intentionally locked, an intruder who circumvents the network security controls and gains access to the data domain system will be unable to read the file system without the proper administrative control, passphrase and cryptographic key. Encryption of data in flight encrypts data being transferred via DD replicator software. It uses OpenSSL AES 256-bit encryption to encapsulate the replicated data over the wire. The encryption encapsulation layer is immediately removed as soon as it lands on the destination data domain system. Data within the payload can also be encrypted via data domain encryption software. Data sanitization, which is also referred as electronic shredding, is performed when classified or sensitive data is written to any system that is not approved to store such data. Data domains sanitization approach ensures that it complies Department of Defense and National Institute of Systems and Technology procedures. Normal file deletion provides residual data that allows recovery. System sanitization was designed to remove all traces of deleted files without any residual remains and restore the system to the state prior to the file's existence. The data domain sanitization command exists to enable the administrator to delete files at the logical level, whether a backup set or individual files. The primary use of the sanitize command is to resolve classified message incidents that occur when classified data is copied inadvertently onto a non-secure system. System sanitization is typically required in government installations. The system sanitize command erases content in the locations as mentioned. Segments of deleted files not used by other files, contaminated metadata, all unused storage space in the file system, all segments used by deleted files that cannot be globally erased because some segments might be used by other files. This lesson covers the various user access rules provided in a DD system, the introduction of new limited admin role privilege, security enhancements for the user roles, and the security measures taken for a cloud provider to access data from the DD system. Rules supported by data domain system include admin allows you to administer configure and monitor the entire data domain system, user allows you to monitor data domain systems, security in addition to user role privileges, security allows you to set up security officer configurations and manage other security officer operators, backup operator in addition to user role privileges, backup operator allows you to create snapshots, import and export tapes to a VTL library and move tapes within a VTL library, none used for DD boost authentication and tenant users only, a none role user can log into a data domain system and can change their password, but cannot monitor or configure the primary system. Data domain admin role is designed to have the capability of both creating and destroying data stored on data domain systems. This design does not prevent any rogue administrator from deleting data on the system. The new limited admin rule allows all admin privileges except the ability 
to perform data delete operations. This prevents any potentially malicious administrator from deleting any data from the data domain systems. Users with similar role level are no longer allowed to perform configuration change operations on each other. For example, admin1 should not be allowed to change admin2 password. For these CLI commands, users on same level cannot perform these operations on each other. User change password, user password aging set or reset, admin access add or delete or reset SSH keys, user enable or disable, user delete, user change role. For secure communication with a cloud, we now need to verify the cloud provider identity before backing up the data from data domain. The cloud provider has a host certificate which is issued by the well-known CA authority. A certificate authority certificate and certificate revocation list needs to be imported on the data domain system in order to configure cloud tier. For secure SSL or TLS communication with the cloud, CRL and CA certificates imported will be used for cloud provider identity verification. This lesson covers data domain secure multi-tenancy, its architecture and benefits. The secure multi-tenancy for data domain feature allows enterprises and service providers to deliver data protection as a service. The features enables enterprises to deploy data domain systems in a private cloud, enables service providers to deploy data domain systems in a hybrid or public cloud, and SMT also allows different cloud models for protection storage, which includes local backup, replicated backup and remote backup. Secure multi-tenancy for data domain systems is a feature that enables secure isolation of many users and workloads on a shared system. As a result, the activities of one tenant are not visible or apparent to other tenants. This capability improves cost efficiency through a shared infrastructure while providing each tenant with the same visibility isolation and control that they would have with their own standalone data domain system. A tenant may be one or more business units or departments hosted on site for an enterprise or large enterprise. For example, finance and human resources sharing the same data domain system. Each department would be unaware of the presence of the other. A tenant may also be one or more external applications that are hosted remotely by a service provider on behalf of a client. SMT components also known as management objects provide security and isolation within a shared infrastructure. SMT components are initially created by the admin during the basic provisioning sequence but can also be created manually as needed. In SMT terms, the landlord is the storage admin or the data domain administrator. The landlord is responsible for managing the data domain system. The landlord sets up the file systems, storage, networking, replication and protocols. They are also responsible for monitoring overall system health and replace any failed hardware as necessary. A tenant is responsible for scheduling and running the backup application for the tenant customer and for managing their own tenant units including configuration backup protocols and monitoring resources and stats within their tenant unit. Tenant units are logical containers of M trees. They also contain important information such as users, notification groups and other configuration elements. Tenant units cannot be viewed or detected by other tenants, which ensures security and isolation of the control path 
when running multiple tenants simultaneously on the shared infrastructure. The example in this slide shows two companies, red and blue, share the same data domain system. Tenant units and individual data paths are logically and securely isolated from each other and are managed independently. Tenant users can back up using their application servers to data domain in secure isolation from other tenants on the data domain system. Tenant administrators can perform self-service fast copy operations within their tenant units for data restores as needed. Tenant administrators are able to monitor data capacity and associated alerts for capacity and stream use. The landlord responsible for the data domain system monitors and manages all tenants in the system and has visibility across the entire system. They set capacity and stream quotas on the system for the different tenant units and report on tenant unit data. Logical data isolation allows providers to spread the capital expenditure and operational expenditure of a protection storage infrastructure across multiple tenants. Data isolation is achieved by using separate DD Boost users for different M trees or by using the access mechanisms of NFS, CIFS and VTL. A tenant unit is a partition of a data domain system that serves as a unit of administrative isolation between tenants. Multiple roles with different privilege levels combine to provide the administrative isolation on a multi-tenant data domain system. The tenant admin and tenant user can be restricted only to certain tenant units on a data domain system and allowed to execute a subset of the commands that a data domain system administrator would be allowed. Both of these roles enable tenant self-service. The DD Boost protocol allows creation of multiple DD Boost users on a data domain system. With that, each tenant can be assigned one or more DD Boost user credentials that can be assigned to access privileges to one or more M3 in a tenant unit defined for a particular tenant. This allows secure access to different tenant data sets using their separate DD Boost credentials for restricting access and visibility. Metering and reporting enable a provider to ensure that they are running a sustainable business model. The need of such reporting in a multi-tenant environment is even greater for the provider to track usage on a shared asset such as a data domain system. Similarly, for other protocols such as CIFS, NFS and VTL, the native protocol level access control mechanism can be used to provide isolation. This module covered the protocols supported by data domain over both Ethernet and Fiber Channel. It also provides the benefit of various data domain features such as DD Boost, which is a private, efficient and data transfer protocol used with data domain systems. The other topics covered include data security, user access features and SMT, which provide data protection by leveraging encryption and access permission for different roles. New features like receipt replication and cloud tier were also discussed. This module focuses on how to access a data domain system through the data domain command line interface, data domain system manager and the data domain management center. This lesson covers managing the data domain system from the command line interface using direct access and remote access. Data Domain Command Line Interface enables you to manage data domain systems. The initial installation and configuration of data domain operating system will most likely be done 
with direct access to the hardware either through a serial connection or using a keyboard and monitor directly attached to the system. To initially access the data domain system, the default administrator's username and password will be used. The default administrator name is sysadmin. The initial password for the sysadmin user on a physical data domain system is the system's serial number. The initial password for the sysadmin user on a virtual data domain instance is change me. The DDoS command reference guide provides information for using the commands to accomplish specific administration tasks. Each command also has an online help page that gives the complete command syntax. Help pages are available at the CLI using the help command. Any data domain system command that accepts a list accepts entries separated by commas, by spaces or both. After the initial configuration is done, you can use the SSH or Telnet, IPMI or SOL utilities to access the system using the CLI remotely. Data domain systems running with DDoS 5.0 or higher supports remote power management using the Intelligent Platform Management interface and they support remote monitoring of the boot sequence using serial over LAN. Some of the capabilities of remote power management that are supported through IPMI are powering on the data domain system after power outage, power cycle after a DDoS crash, powering off to save power on the systems that are not currently in use, obtaining the power status. The console activities that are supported through SOL are running diagnostics, install, upgrade or reconfiguring the DDoS, accessing the BIOS, viewing valuable post and boot messages. This lesson covers managing the data domain system from the GUI using the Data Domain System Manager and Data Domain Management Center. Data domain systems are managed using sophisticated tools like Data Domain System Manager. The Data Domain System Manager is a browser-based graphical user interface available through Ethernet connections for managing one or more systems from any location. It provides a single consolidated management interface that allows for configuration and monitoring of many system features and system settings. It provides simple configuration wizards which guide you through a simplified configuration of your system to get your system operating quickly. You can access the system manager from many popular web browsers like Microsoft Internet Explorer, Google Chrome and Mozilla Firefox. Data Domain Management Center is a scalable framework that streamlines the management and monitoring of data domain systems. It integrates complex workflows into a single interface which eliminates the overhead of managing devices across large data centers or remote sites. Some of the key features include health and status resource monitoring, capacity and replication management, aggregated system management, simultaneous management of multiple data domain system across data centers or remote sites, providing administrative roles with limited responsibilities, group and property-based administration. The DDMC solution is designed for customers with multiple data domain systems who are seeking to aggregate management and reporting from a single interface. In contrast, the Data Domain Manager is primarily a single system management tool that provides centralized monitoring and management for up to 20 systems. The Data Domain System Manager does not aggregate storage and or performance data from multiple systems as provided by the Data Domain Management Center. 
click the launch button to view the video. Click the launch button to view the video. This module covered accessing a data domain system using the command line interface, the data domain management center and the data domain system manager. The initial installation and configuration is done with direct access to the hardware either through a serial connection or using a keyboard and monitor directly attached to the system. After the initial configuration is done, you can use the SSH or Telnet, IPMI or SOL utilities to access the system using the CLI remotely. DDoS can be accessed using the GUI through Data Domain System Manager which is a single system management tool that provides centralized monitoring and management or the Data Domain Management Center that aggregates management and reporting from a single interface. This module focuses on the data domain support features and the latest upgrade process. This lesson covers the overview of ESRS support along with Connect EMC and high availability support. EMC Secure Remote Services also known as ESRS is a two-way remote connection between Dell EMC customer service and Dell EMC products that enables remote monitoring, diagnosis and repair. ESRS assures availability and optimization of the Dell EMC infrastructure and is a key component of Dell EMC's industry-leading customer service. The connection is secure, high-speed and operates 24 cross 7. ESRS is the remote service solution application that is installed on one or more customer supplied dedicated servers. ESRS becomes the single point of entry and exit for all IP based EMC remote service activities for the devices associated with that particular ESRS. ESRS functions as a communication broker between the managed devices, the policy manager and the Dell EMC enterprise. The policy manager allows you to set permissions for devices that are being managed by ESRS. ESRS is an HTTPS handler. All messages are encoded using standard XML and SOAP application protocols. ESRS message type include device state heartbeat polling, connect homes, remote access session initiation, user authentication requests, device management synchronization. ESRS supports the use of Connect EMC. The Connect EMC method encrypts alerts and auto support reports before transmission to Dell EMC customer support. It also provides high availability support. Connect EMC is a standardized method that Dell EMC products use to transport system event files securely to Dell EMC support. The Connect EMC method sends messages in a secure format using FTP or HTTPS. Then it is used with an EMC secure remote support gateway. One benefit is that a single gateway can forward messages from multiple systems and this allows you to configure network security for only the ESRS gateway instead of for multiple systems. Also, a usage intelligence report is generated. In general, there are auto support alerts and alert summaries sent to Dell EMC support. An e-license is required if the system is a physical data domain system or DDVE. Configure network security only for ESRS Gateway instead of multiple systems. The ESRS GUI supports high availability. The configuration is similar to the non-HA systems with the addition of the HA peer IP 
which is a required field. HA uses a floating IP address to provide data access to the data domain HA pair regardless of which physical node is the active node. This lesson covers minimally disruptive upgrades and how the upgrade process is different from previous upgrade methods. The minimally disruptive upgrade feature lets you upgrade specific software components or apply bug fixes without a system reboot. Only those services that depend on the component being upgraded are disrupted. So, the MDU feature can prevent significant downtime during certain software upgrades. Not all software components qualify for a minimally disruptive upgrade. Such components must be upgraded as part of a regular DDoS system software upgrade. A DDoS software upgrade uses a large RPM which performs upgrade actions for all of the components of DDoS. MDU uses smaller component bundles which upgrade specific software components individually. Prior to DDoS 6.0, most upgrades of a data domain require complete system reboots. From DDoS 6.0, Dell EMC wants to minimize complete system reboots. The solution for that is minimally disruptive upgrade. MDU is basically similar to the atomic upgrade but comprised with standalone components RPMs like DDSH.RPM, VTL.RPM. These standalone components come in smaller packages to facilitate faster delivery to the system. An MDU is triggered when a specific component is used to upgrade the system. The effect of the new component will take place just as in an atomic upgrade. But only the processes relating to the specific component will reboot instead of the entire system. After completing an MDU, the DDoS version changes like an atomic upgrade. This module covered the DD support features which includes the EMC Secure Remote Services. ESRS is a remote connection between Dell EMC customer service and Dell EMC products. The ESRS application provides remote monitoring, diagnosis and repair. Connect EMC and high availability support is also provided by ESRS. Minimally disruptive upgrade is the latest upgrade process provided by DDoS 6.0 where only specific software components are upgraded without a complete system reboot. This course covered features, benefits and advantages of using a data domain system for backup operations. The physical architecture of a typical backup environment using data domain systems and the methods used for administering a data domain system. This concludes the training. Proceed to the course assessment on the next slide.